to you, but that this is a this is a two-way relationship. As we set this time aside, Lord, to come and to bring our hearts and our lives and our voices and our worship before you, that that you respond, Lord God. You you want to speak into our lives. There are things that you want to say to us. So God, we just we thank you for this moment, Lord, for this space. Lord, we just pray that we would have our ears to hear what it is that you want to to whisper to us this morning. Lord, the encouragements, the, the comforts, the challenges, the words of direction and of leading. Lord God, we just tune, we tune ourselves, Lord, to you. This morning we say, Father, speak, your servants are listening. Shape us and mold us this morning. Let us have not just ears to hear, but all that means in lives and hearts willing to respond. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're welcome to take a seat. Everybody. Awesome. Just to um, let you know, it's probably been a, a while since we've um, spoken about this or encouraged this, but you know, when we gather, sometimes God has things just to say to us personally that we need to, to hear, that we need to listen to from Him. But at times, He also gives us a word or a scripture or an encouragement that is um, for everybody, for everybody to hear. So, you know, if you feel that um, at the conclusion of our time of worship, that God has placed something on your heart or even through that time, then please feel free just to come and um, let one of the service leaders know or one of the leaders on the um, front rows. There'll be usually two or three there. And um, just, yeah, let us know that you feel like you've got something to share and we'd love to make space um, for that in, in our services because we're not the only ones that hear from God. We, we as people. And he wants to talk to us. So please be encouraged. I know it can take a bit of courage to do that at times, but let's be those people that hear and respond and bring that encouragement to each other. Right? It's a way that we love each other, yeah. is to listen and to bring, bring those words for each other on behalf of each other. So that would be amazing. Thank you for that. Um, just a bit of family news. Um, uh, many of you will know Karen Bradley, her dad actually passed away earlier um, this week, Earl Hurst. And um, I think I spotted Mark. Mark yeah. Hi, Mark. Great to have you with us. Mark is Earl's grandson and grew up um, in our church family here. Um, Myself and Clive and Mike and Michelle were at Earl's service on Friday. And just what a, um, my goodness, what just a beautiful time of recognising um, just a life faithfully lived yeah. before God. Yeah. Of a man who, who loved his wife, who loved his family, who um, faithfully served people with the gifts that God had given him. And who faithfully served and led in his church congregation. He was... Um, very much a part of the leadership team at Life Church here in Tamu um, for many years. So just a life beautifully and faithfully lived. And you know, it's those moments when you just stop and remember the really important things. It makes you stop and think about life. What are the things that are important? And it's it's just a, it's a great thing to have those reminders just kind of come to your attention. So we would just really love to, to lift um, the Bradley family um, up to our father this morning, so um, Doug and Karen, um, Robert and Mark, I think Robert's away, and Maddie of course um, is part of that picture too, so let's just join this family. Could we stand this morning and just um, pray for them together? Father, as family, we want to bring family before you, and Lord God, you know, um, as was shared at uh, the service that we attended, that there is a tension in these moments, there is there is celebration, there is rejoicing in a life lived well and a life lived beautifully and faithfully before you. There is rejoicing in knowing that uh, the Earl is in your keeping. He is in your care. He, he is at rest. And Lord, that, that those words belong to him. Well done, good and faithful servant. But Lord, we also know the other side of the sense of, of loss. It being parted from someone that um, is precious, is loved um, by his family, by his children, by his grandchildren. So, Father, we just want to lift those who are mourning and who are feeling 
that, that loss today. And God, we just ask that by your spirit, you would just come alongside them and bring the comfort that only you can bring. Lord God, we thank you for um, the legacy that he has left with them, for the steps that they continue to walk out that have flowed from their relationship with Earl. God, we just pray that they would know your strength, your encouragement. They would just know um, just the, the, the energy for what needs to happen, Lord, in the coming weeks and months, all those things that, that are part of this kind of happening in life. Lord, we just pray strength for that and grace. Thank you, Father God. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Just remember them yeah. through the week and the coming weeks. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. All right, I would just love to welcome Pastor Mike to come and share. Thank you, Dawn. Welcome, everybody. It's great to have you here. I think I'm being strategically positioned for the camera and... All of those, obviously a bunch of people uh, not with us today who would love to be here to be part of such a significant moment, Baptism Sunday, but it's a terrible thing when you have to try and find the weekend, you know the least people will be at church so you can make room for your friends and family uh, and all of that, and we can do it in one service without having to kind of spill out into um, another space or another meeting time, because it is wonderful just to be able to do this with family, as family, um, it's a big part of who we are. Now, this may um, shock you, but I don't have a bunch of notes this morning, but there's a couple of things that we need to have a conversation about as a family. And um, the Apostle Paul, when he wrote his letters, many of them in the New Testament, uh, he was often addressing issues in culture, and it's like, how does the gospel apply to this situation? They were uh, people who were trying to live faithful to God in a pluralistic society where there was other gods worshipped, it was normal to worship other gods, um, these were things that they were having to, to wrestle with. And if you talk to someone who grew up outside of New Zealand, um, maybe if you're of Chinese descent growing up in Malaysia, uh, you would know this, wouldn't you, Caroline, that actually there might be some spirituality that's normative in the culture that you're at that is kind of off limits to you as a follower of Christ because what God's interested in is having our full attention and not sharing it with other gods. And so I just want to take a moment this morning just to touch on something uh, in our nation. This weekend is Matariki. Uh, it's, um, I think, a, a, pretty, a pretty cool thing in some ways. Um, but it's something that we have to navigate as a church because for us, we're used to kind of our spirituality being the spirituality. Has anyone noticed that? Yeah. We grow up and we think as soon as uh, anybody doesn't play by the Christian rules, yeah. then, you know, something's gone terribly wrong, but we forget that actually... To play by the Christian rules is to actually have your heart transformed and your eyes open to realize that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and make a decision like Sophie's making today to say, I will serve no other gods other than Him. Amen. That's the declaration of baptism. You don't get born into Jesus, you get baptized into Jesus. It's called being born again. Some of you know that because like me, maybe Christianese is your first language. And get born again. That's not New Zealand language. That's Christian language. That's the tradition of the church for the last 2,000 years. And so I just want to take a moment, not just to bypass it. It is um, uh, Matariki. And I don't know how you're navigating it. It's very easy to get polarized these days. Do you notice that people generally choose one side of an argument and then dig themselves in and don't want to talk to the other side of an argument? You know, I notice that in culture. We start throwing stones at each other or we cancel each other. It's just pretty much how it goes. <laughs> These days we call it, has its, even has its own name. It's called cancel culture. Right? I might still to myself today, or are we, we on the journey together? Awesome. So I just want to uh, kind of anchor us, hopefully as a church family, uh, in that, because we don't actually have to pull out heaps of different verses for that. Hopefully we know the Christian story. We can try and discern together using the scripture. Uh, it's many reference points to try and work out what does it look like to faithfully stand and a nation that's no longer, and by the way, hasn't for a long time to pop anybody's bubble, being faithful to Christ. Before we took the name out of the prayer, before we did all of that, we were definitely a people, at best, who honoured him with our lips, but our hearts were far from him. This is the problem in the First Testament. A group of people who became culturally Christian, but were not faithfully Christian. They knew the rules, they knew the right words to say, they knew how to conduct the services, 
but their hearts were not fully surrendered or submitted to God. Yeah? That makes sense. And so we need to wrestle now with something that perhaps generations before us haven't had to wrestle with. We are now finding ourselves in a pluralistic society where there's gods other than than Jesus who are being lifted up as being supreme. You may have seen on the news last night. I didn't, but I was informed about it, that there's been some kind of um, uh, certain spots, or the Bible would call it high places, where there has been food sacrifices offered to the gods. Is that right, Mona? Yeah, I saw it, I was told about it on the news where there's huge feasts being prepared for the gods to come and take it up. That's deeply problematic for a Christian. Right? It's deeply problematic for a Christian. And so we need to be really aware that um, the reason why a lot of this stuff had, there's a couple of reasons why a lot of the stuff had moved out of our cultural site, and this is where we need to be honest when it's very easy to point your finger at the other person to have sober judgment about yourself. But um, whether you agree with me or not, um, we have whitewashed our history and the, the eradication of all things Māori has not always been because of just because of the revival that came to Māori through Māori of the receiving of the gospel and the turning, of, uh, the turning away from the, the atuas in, in Te Ao Māori to the capital A atua, God the Father, Iu Karaiti, the Son, Jesus Christ, and Waido Tapu, Tapu, the Holy Spirit. That was a beautiful thing and that led them away from their... Um, idolatry. And they're not the only people, or we all have idols, right? Yeah. We, we just don't uh, make a big thing of ours. We just worship them quietly. Yeah. You know, your financial plan. That's an idol. What's an idol? Anything that you put before God, or anything you have to check with before you say yes to God. When God says, I want you to care for that person, or I want you to be consistent in your giving, or I want you to be generous to that need, or I want you to be sacrificial in your giving, not just working out what works out once you've done all the things that you want to do. Or I want you to be consistent with your gathering with the family of the people of God. Or I want you to have an eye for the lost and the lonely and the outcast. When you sit there and say, no, my plan doesn't allow for that, the Bible calls that idolatry. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So we need to be really careful that today is not about finger pointing. And I do not want to be. Do not want to be. I want to be a million miles from that posture uh, as a leader of the church. And, um, you know, uh, certainly when I look at my culture, my first culture, I'm of European descent. Um, we have whitewashed a bunch of things and treated people far less than um, people who are acting out of the script of Scripture. We have not lifted up. We have not cared for. We have not protected. We have used means that are so far from the kingdom of God to bring about our rule and reign. Is that okay? Can we say that? Can we be honest about that? And we shouldn't walk around feeling guilty about that. We just need to be sober judgment about that and carry walk around with humility, which is my way is not the best way. And actually love invites me to understand who you are and see who you are, not project who I want you to be on you. It's what love does. Love sees it doesn't project. Be quiet. It's a family conversation, isn't it? A family come So how do we have it? Do we rebel against it and sit there and go, oh my goodness, all of this rubbish. No, it's not rubbish. Let's work out how it got, we got rid of it in the first place. Well, we took everything from the northern hemisphere and we copy and pasted it to the southern hemisphere. This is pretty much the New Zealand New Year. And we actually as a church will do our vision series starting next week to acknowledge that. So this is a logical reset for the southern hemisphere um, by the stars and the lunar Systems. This is kind of our, you can think that we, as Europeans, everything we have comes from kind of that modus operandi or that system of operating. They, over their winter months, uh, stop and reflect on what's been. Uh, they think about how the year's gone. They think about some of the goals they'll set for the year ahead. And they party with food so they can warm up their insides when it's cold outside. It's weird for us because they take their holidays in summer and they do their remembrance and family celebrations in winter when it's cold. It actually makes perfect sense for us to go, actually, you know, the Māori were here before us and know actually how the weather systems and all of that work here. And actually, there's, um, literally, this is just an acknowledgement of the calendar. You can actually separate the spirituality from the calendar aspect. Yeah. And we honour the calendar aspect. You don't have to be for or against. There's a way down the middle. 
Is that okay? There's a way down the middle. We don't have to throw it all out. We don't have to jump all in. We can have sober judgment and go, it probably wasn't smart to copy and paste everything from the Northern Hemisphere to the Southern Hemisphere. It's probably fair to recognise that some people that might have been a bit smart about these things here before us and we actually don't just do all the teaching, but we can do some learning. Yeah? Yeah. I think that's what the Apostle Paul would call living a life worthy of the calling. Conducting ourselves with humility. Me and my people don't know everything about everything. And we can learn from other people too. But it's us. And so but we don't have to jump into the spirituality. We uh, are still, Bill and I were talking before the service and we're trying to work out, well, what's some of the things that don't need interpreting in the First Testament? There's a lot that does. But God is a jealous God. And he is looking for our fidelity, our faithfulness, our soul being sold out for him and his his work and his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that starts with our hearts being unreservedly sold out for him. And that's what today's been. Many of you will have done what we've done today. And so all I've done is remind you of what it is that we all did when we decided to say yes to Jesus because to say yes to Jesus like marriage was to say no to everything and everybody else. In economics, for those of you who are financial words, it's called opportunity cost. You can only spend it once. That's what opportunity cost is in economics. If I have $50 and I spend it on something that costs $50, there's something else I can't buy for $50. Why? Because you can only spend it Christian marriage. I'm going to say Christian marriage because marriage is now getting complicated in our pluralistic, different worldview context. Is kind of we're going to increase, increasingly have going to have to talk about the difference between state marriage and Christian marriage because you can have state marriage between a man and a woman that still does not honour God. We're going to have to get a little bit more nuanced in our views because we can't just stamp everything. And just say that we own everything around here because we're Christians and we're a Christian nation. We're not. We're going to have to get smarter than that. We're going to have to be like the Bereans who go home and, and search the scriptures out and go, is this actually, are we on the right track here? What was actually Jesus trying to say? What is it that the New Testament writers were trying to teach us as they would equip us to work out what it looks like to be faithful to God in every generation? Why is it important that it's worked out in every generation? Because culture moves. So we need to not have just rules, we need to have a Jesus lens that helps us to understand what is good and what is pleasing to God. Or in Philippians 1, he says this, Paul says this writing from prison, he says, It's my heart that you would know this love and it would overflow with knowledge and understanding that in every situation you would know what is best or know what is right, depending on your translation. We want to be those people who can navigate our way through these things, not in ignorance, but with humility, but a strong sense of fidelity and faithfulness to God. And so we're going to acknowledge that next week, hey, this is the start of New Zealand's New Year. I think that makes sense. I don't feel compromised by that in the slightest. And if we're going to have a time of celebration and we're going to have midwinter Christmases, essentially that's this, this is that's why people have midwinter Christmas, because it doesn't make sense to really do it when we do it, because we want the warm food and the family gatherings and the warmness on the inside to counteract the coldness. On the outside. Although, this, this is probably not a good morning for that message. Then I noticed the Norwester out there. When I went out in my big jacket and my hat and nearly roasted. Like, instantaneously. Number one, Matariki. Number two, marriage. Today's not a, a day about instructing. It's a day about reminding. Uh, I just recently had the privilege of marrying um, a couple in Waimedi, one of our Waimedi families. Um, they invited me to um, do conduct the daughter of their wedding... Uh, daughter of their wedding, the wedding of their daughter, uh, in their home in Waimati. And uh, as I was thinking about this morning and thinking about my own daughter uh, making steps um, of, of this declaration today, I was just reminded of the ring ceremony that I performed uh, only a couple of weeks ago. Uh, as they gave promises one to another, they, I gave them a charge as the one who was essentially God's representative in that space and charged them, will you be faithful to each other, and that declaration wasn't just for the people around them, it was for the God who hears and sees everything, that they would have a responsibility to Him, but they would have a responsibility to each other, and we'll talk about that next. But then there's this symbolic act that represents 
what's been done. An external symbolic act that represents internal decision. And it's the giving of the rings. And we often do this spiel. Those of us that have done a few weddings, we, we talk about the, the symbolic nature of a ring because of its circular shape. So it's an unending promise. It's a commitment that's not meant to have an end. It's just going to start and it just keeps going. It's an eternal commitment. It does not break. It, it should not be pulled apart. And that's why, you know, it's, it's this ring shape. And then we talk about how it's made out of gold because this is something that is incredibly valuable to us. It's something that uh, actually costs us something. That's why we do these things in gold because we're saying that what we're doing here is really, really important and we esteem it very, very highly. That's why we sacrificially put money in to purchase this thing that reminds us of the value of the thing that we are doing. And the line that goes with that, the line that I've come to use in, in more recent years is, is simply this, I give you this ring as a sign of my love, uh, as, a, as a, a token of my love and a sign of my promise. It says, committing myself to you alone and forsaking all others. That's what today's about. It's really important because whenever I do a wedding, I definitely, my message is normally preached. A couple don't remember what you say to them. Even though you like thoughtfully go, this is their special moment. It's going to be in photos. It's going to be uh, on video. It's going to be all of those things. But you talk to them afterwards and you kind of go, did you love how I like, connected that thing that was really important to you? People are like, I don't really remember what you said. We were just like nervous, but in love, but like locking eyes and teary. And, and so what happens is it ends up becoming for all of the people who are watching to remind them of what they one day once committed. And there's an aspect of that for us today. As Sophie does that and she sets herself apart for him and him alone. There should be a gentle reminder to all of us that we did that one day, and a fresh invitation for us to check our hearts and say, how are we doing with it? Maybe you've been watching some of the coverage and go, man, I'm not going to fall for that Matariki stuff, and I'm not going to offer food to the gods, because that's not what I'm about. It's like, yeah, but what other gods are you dancing with? That's right. You pledged that you would give yourself to him and him alone, forsaking all others. So is there a plan or a scheme or a devotion to self that has crept in, that has stopped you giving yourself fully to God? I love what Doug Bradley said once, and I've quoted it many times in my messages, and he'll be, I'm sure, one of the people that catches up with this later on, but he once did a, a communion message where he talked about the analogy of a living sacrifice that Paul uses in the New Testament. He said, the problem with being a living sacrifice is you can crawl off the altar. <laughs> if it's dead, it's kind of dead. You just put it there and it gets, gets burned up, you know, and it can't do anything about it. But as a living sacrifice, you have to choose to stay there, even when it hurts. Even when you're having to count the opportunity cost. For me to be faithful to him means I can't do that, and I can't do that, and I can't have that, and I can't do that, and I can't be with that person and do that, and I can't, right? I can't hold, hold that for myself, and I can't, come on, I can't build my life around my plan because I said that I was selling myself out for his plan. I pray this for you, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, not my will be done, and so I'm going to structure everything around it, and then I'll make sure I just keep God happy by just giving him something every now and then. Amen? Yep. Smile, people. <laughs> it's a wonderful day. Family, my purple. My tariki, marriage, family. Weddings are important because they're not just done between two people and before God, but And uh, you're not the audience today. You're the family. It's a real um, privilege to have so many of our uh, biological family here with uh, Michelle's sis sister and brother-in-law, her mum and dad, and my parents, obviously resident here in Timaru, and brothers and sisters, and uh, Michelle and I are quite pleased to be here as well. <laughs> all of that. But one of the things that we are deeply grateful for and I believe that we need to be reminded of as well, is that we are not just an audience that gather once a week. We're a family who have been knitted together 
in the power of the Spirit under the Lordship of Christ. I'm so deeply grateful. Some of you go, yeah, 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 and I know we sing that every week. No, no, no. I'm grateful for all the other auntie and uncles who are here today. I'm grateful for the Jamie and Becca Chapmans. I'm, I look around and I know it's a long weekend and there's a bunch of people who I know who are significant to Sophie and her Jamie, who can't be here for whatever reason, whether it's grief or you know, all of those things, but there's just so many people who she relates to through youth group, through kids' church, through all of that stuff that just have added to her journey to help her come to this decision today. Um, I said to her, I said, you need to work out what you're going to say because most people assume you're just doing it because you're my daughter. And that we're making you do it. Because <laughs> that's what we do in our house. We've intentionally not raised the subject with our kids at all, but to uh, both our girls now have raised it with us. Say, Mum, I've, Mum and Dad, I feel like we need to do that. And we want to recognise today that that's not just because of God's work, although God is good, but we realise He hasn't worked just directly, and she may share about some of the God encounters and the clarity moments she's had, but also the many of you who have um, given yourself to to her raising and her nurturing. It's amazing when we just celebrated our Tilly 16th the other day, and there was a whole bunch of us that have been on this journey raising our kids together about 15 years. Oh, man, we were young when we started. Sorry, I just need to lean on something. It's been a long journey. And of course, so many of those people were not able to be here today. That's not the point. The point is that we have been called into a family, and we're not just a community of shared belief. We're meant to be a community of sacrificial love, one to another. And I'm deeply grateful as a father here today for all of the input that many of you have made into our belief. And today, she is going to make that bold declaration, not just to God and not just in front of her parents but in front of her whole church family. And it's all of our job to sit there and go, hey Sophie, how are you going with that? You know you had that moment of clarity where you came out of the waters and you know, how are you going with that? And that's remember this is a reminder for all of us. Some of us, man, it's so easy for us to get into that space and go, oh I've done, been there, done that. I just need to turn up to church once every third week. That's enough to keep the wheels spinning and all that. We've forgotten that we are part of a family of accountability where we champion one another on, where we encourage one another on to good works even more as we see that they're approaching, as the writer of Hebrews says, as people were kind of getting in, uh, enculturated into another culture where there was the pull of just do what is good for you. Is it good church weather today? It's not bad church weather today, but that warm wind I thought was going to cost us at least a few people. Come on, people might go, oh, it'd just be nice to get and have a walk as a family. Really commune with God. And actually, we're part of a family. This is, this is part of how we commune with God, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. God has called us into family. And baptism is an act of declaration into family. Not just into Jesus, but into Jesus and His family. It's got a very special name. Does anybody know it? The church. Ecclesia, if you want to go Greek. The assemblies of God is the English translation. So some of you can tap yourself on the back and feel very spiritual. We're part of the Assemblies of God movement, which is the direct translation of Ecclesia. It's used in the First Testament. And when is it used in the First Testament? Where's the word Ecclesia used in the Greek Old Testament, the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the Ecclesia, it's used when the people of God gather around Moses when he has the covenant promises. The people of God assemble together to hear, to be instructed by the word so they can go and live it out. Is the direct translation of the word Ecclesia. The people of God gathered together to hear, to be shaped, to be formed by the word of God. The Ecclesia. So today's not just a commitment to be privately spiritual. It's a, it's a decision to be publicly accountable. When we sit there and think about idolatry, and it's so easy to find some low-hanging fruit, maybe even at this time. But some of us, we, we actually are more faithful to ourselves and our inner feelings than we are to our covenant commitment to God and each other. We withhold our time hold our affection and we hold our resources we hold our service. Today is a reminder. It's, not, it's getting heavy. It's not this is what it means to be the church. 
Are we on time? Oh, That's a miracle. That's a miracle. I've got to the end of my three things. Matariki. Marriage. And family. We are a covenant community. This is one of our distinctives as a church. Covenants are our thing. Covenant relationship with God. Covenant in a marriage, which is meant to be a picture to the world of God's relationship with His church, marked by sacrificial love and service. He's made a way for us. Our response is faithfulness to Him. And on that note, I'd really love to invite my youngest child by a whopping two minutes. Believe me, it's a big two minutes in our household. <laughs> Asher will often talk about his younger sister. <laughs> By two minutes. Um, are the kids going to join us? Awesome. Hey, well, let's take some Q&A while we wait then. Anyone got any um, questions about anything I just said? I'm actually happy to take it. <laughs> Hit me with your best shot. You can talk to me about my legalism and my liberalism and my... Go for it. Or just... Do you have one comment? Yeah. Um, Uh-oh, it's my father-in-law, so I have to be nice. <laughs> so if you wonder why I'm not my normal self. You were talking about transporting things from the northern hemisphere to here. Hmm. Uh, one of the things that used to happen was that they, they brought the plans of the housing at uh, the New Zealand, and they forgot to mirror them, yeah, and so they, they put the houses around the wrong way, and they didn't get the sun. And I heard a preacher once, when I was a, a child, spoke about this, how that we could have the wrong perspective, and they have the houses with the mm. wrong perspective. Yes, and I thought that just added to your... Yeah, I love that. That's true. It's just another example of copy and paste, right? Yeah. Copy and paste. It's like, we're, we're the people in New Zealand who sing about Frosty the Snowman in December. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> the wide-reaching, I'm using the nice word for it today, copy and paste, copy and paste. It has darker words with much more loaded emotions attached to them. But I'm not picking a fight today. I'm just trying to speak, lay down some truth. Yeah. Anyone else? It's good for us to discuss. I'm, it's, a, it's a privilege that we have as a smaller group. Hey. I hope people talk to us about Wait. baptism something else. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Jamie, it's a good thing that you asked. <laughs> I'm so glad you all asked that question. Yeah. Hey, um, come and see Jamie, um, myself, Michelle, <laughs> Pastor Becca in the back there. She's always hiding in the back looking for the um, baptism conversations. Uh, in fact, anyone who you know is one of the team here. There's a bunch of people. Uh, Pastor Thorne's here. She could get a message through. In fact, anyone get a message through. You're a small group leader, anyone like that. Um, if you're really scraping the bottom of the barrel and you can't find anyone, um, there's always Steve Little pops in from time to time. Uh, sorry, in-house joke. He's our Tamuka pastor uh, who's just in, because he is one of those uncles to Sophie, uh, senior driver. Um, but yeah, we would love to talk um, to you about this. It's a really significant thing in a world that invites you into an internal facing world, uh, private spirituality, you know, which is almost another whole religion all of its own that doesn't have a lot to do with the God of the Bible. Uh, we would encourage you, if you've not done this, to make that public declaration. That uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Amen? Amen. Cool. Do we think these kids are coming? Kids are having afternoon tea. Having afternoon tea? Morning tea. Oh, morning tea. Yeah. In that case, I'll be back in 10 minutes. <laughs> Very brief. Yeah. Well, the other thing. I just wondered if they're having Cheerios. <laughs> Cheerios. Yeah, Jamie. Jamie, if they're having Cheerios, you would have smelled it and you'd already been here. Um, He's the savoury king, everybody. If you want to make Jamie, if you want to really give him a gift, that I appreciate you want to always in Cheerios with some tomato sauce. She, I just want the kids to hear what she has to say. That's all. Um, my last thought was uh, Romans uh, invites us to be a community that doesn't just talk about, but really loves. It says rejoice with those with, who rejoice okay. and to mourn with those who mourn. And so we stand with you today, Sue de Toy, who is mourning. Quite a thrashing last night. Uh, 
the only South African player in the room probably last night. There's about 25 of us gathered uh, to watch the rugby, and so we just mourn with you. We stand with you in solidarity with heavy hearts. And, yeah, and as Christian, hey, look, we love we love the powerless, and so we we stand with you. Uh, the, the lowly and the powerless, we stand with you. <laughs> I'm going to get told off. They did have flashes of brilliance, and we did celebrate both of those. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right, very quick notices. Okay, giving online or by ECOS in the foyer. Um, if it's for the building, tag building, you're sitting in the results of doing that. So if you'd like to do that, then please continue to um, give towards that as well. Um, small group leaders, I have to, I can't speak this one, I have to slow down on this one. Small groups, so important for just um, life and family, for discipleship, for being formed into the likeness of Christ. This is where it happens. This is where um, people get to know you and you get to know others. This is where those, those um, intimate conversations, where those prayers together, where, where all that kind of takes place. So such an important building block of who we are as God's family. So if you would be keen to host or to lead a small group with others, then please let us know. Um, and it's not a case of just putting your hand up and then just um, being told, okay, off you go and do it. Um, we come alongside you, we support you, there is training, there is um, a group where our ladies get together and receive input and um, direction and um, material. So if that's something you just feel a little stirring around that, then please talk to us, um, contact one of us about that. That would be fantastic. Um, that's it. I have one other notice. So study opportunities coming up. Um, we have a Revelation Intensive coming up in August, so we'll get you more information about that a little close to the time. But if you would like to just understand that thing a little better, um, and you would like to come to that, then that will be a great opportunity. The most important one to remember right now is that we're starting into, at college, um, a paper on church history. So we kind of we see what happens in the New Testament in those kind of early years there, we know we're here now, we know what this looks like, but this is all about what happened in the middle. What happened between now and then? You know, Pastor Mike was talking about how we have to work out our faith in different places and times and contexts. So this is an opportunity to see how that has been done through history by the Church of Jesus Christ. We get to look at places where it's been done incredibly beautifully. We get to look at times when it's been done dismally, terribly, and we get to learn from both. So um, if you're interested in that, we've got our first evening this Tuesday, upstairs, 7 till 9. Um, this week is a chance to just come and see, come and have a look, come and hear about what it's going to cover. So if you want to know any more, come talk to me or just turn up on Tuesday, 7 o'clock, upstairs. Cool. That's it. You can go. Okay. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you later. <laughs> Anyone who did have a word for Sophie and you didn't get a chance to bring it in, please make sure you write it down for her, put it in a card, send an email, send a text. Um, we'd really like Sophie to get all of those things.